Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part 9 of our tile-based top-down shooter game. And in this video, we're going to actually start adding shooting. So now that our zombies can chase us, we need to give the player a way to fight back. So we're going to add a bullet. So over here in the settings, um, I'm going to make some variables for the properties of our gun. And so first we're going to set up a bullet image and there is a bullet.png that I pulled out of the Kinney art pack which you can get at the link below. It's just a little uh, circular bullet and we're going to set the bullet speed. That's how fast the bullet will travel. A little bit much faster than the player, which moves at 300. And we're also going to put a bullet uh, lifetime. And that's, this is going to be how long the bullet lasts. So if you fire a bullet, it doesn't keep going forever. It's going to uh, disappear after 1,000 milliseconds, one second. So now we can go over here to our sprites, and we can start defining the sprite. And I'm going to make a little shortcut here. I've created a, a shortcut to paste in here. Um, we're going to make a bullet. And the bullet is going to need some information when it spawns. We need to tell it uh, where we want it to be, the position, and what direction it needs to travel in. And both of those will be vectors, uh, loc the location for where it will spawn and the direction that it will travel in. And then the image is just going to be um, game.bullet image, which we need to load over in our uh, load data. There we are. We'll just duplicate this and we will load the bullet image. And that's going to be That's going to be the bullet image. Okay, and while we're over here, we'll also add a group. We're going to want another group to put all of our bullets in. Okay. So now, okay. So we have our bullets spawning. Our position is going to be that position that we passed in. And we're going to put our rectangle there. Our velocity is going to be that direction vector that we passed in, which is going to be a direction vector is just a vector with a length of one. Right? It's just going to be a unit vector pointing in the direction we want the bullet to travel. So we need to multiply that by uh, the bullet speed so that we know which way to go. And then we also need to track our spawn time. That way we know when to delete the bullet. Okay, and then the update is just going to be to move. Move at our velocity. Update our rectangle to that location. And then if We're going to take get ticks minus spawn time. If that is greater than the bullet lifetime, then we delete the bullet. Okay, so that's good enough for now. Oops, let me fix this uh, capital B here. All right, so there's our bullet. All we need to know about our sprite, where it's going to spawn, and now we need to spawn it. Now we have all our key controls up here on our player for when the player is moving. So we're just going to add another one here for uh, K space. Oh, and we need one more setting here actually. We need a bullet rate. And this is going to be how often, 
how fast we can shoot. If we hold the space bar down, how fast do the bullets get produced? We can make that faster or slower for a machine gun effect and, and so on. So we need to use that over here to tell whether it's time to shoot or not. So we're going to keep track of when the last time we shot was. Right, if that's been long enough, then we can spawn a bullet. So we need to figure out what direction we're pointing in. So we make a unit vector and we just rotate it at the player's rotation. And then we can spawn a bullet. Okay. And we just pass it the game. We pass it the position of the player and we pass it that direction that we just figured out and then we just need to go here and say uh, last shot equals zero so we haven't shot yet when we spawn the player okay so let's try this out we're gonna shoot oh, oh we have a small typo in our bullet we need to store our game reference so that we can use it down here. All right, now we're going to try this out. Now watch what happens when I shoot. Whoa, my player is flying, right? So I'm spawning a bullet, but my player is flying at the bullet speed. What is going on? Well, here's what's happening. So when we shoot, when we fire, we're telling we're sending our player's position to the bullet, right? And then the bullet is taking that position and changing it. So we're basically using the same position for our player and our bullet. So when we update our bullet's position, it also updates the player's position. And that's no good. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want this to be a copy. So the vector the vector class, you can just, if you pass a vector into the vec command, it makes a new vector that's has the same, that's equal to that, but isn't the same vector, right? So if we run this now, right, now I can shoot. And I'm holding the button down, I'm, and you can see how the, you can see how the bullets are timing out when they have gone, traveled for one whole second, right? They don't go further than that. But we probably don't want them to go through the walls either. Right? We probably want them to stop when they hit the walls. So let's also put here in the bullets update. We can use the sprite collide any function. Because I don't care what wall it hits. If it hits any wall. Right? If it hits any wall then it should just get deleted. So that's going to look like this. Okay, so if the bullet hits the wall, it stops. Okay. Now what about making it... Well, before we have it hit the zombie, let's have a look at where the bullet's spawning, right? The bullet is coming out of the center of the player. But I'd really like it to look like it's coming out of the gun. So that means we need to offset the spawn of the bullet to where the barrel of the gun is relative to the center of the player, right? So as it turns, it's always at the same position relative to the player. It's to the player's right a little bit and forward from the center. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to the settings and I'm going to make an offset. So on the player's sprite, there's going to be a barrel offset. And this is going to be a vector representing how far from the center of the sprite the um, barrel of the gun is. And so this is going to be a vector. Now we need to figure out exactly where that is and where it's going to look good, right? And so this is relative to the center. So if we imagine the player is, before the player rotates, he's facing to the right. 
So that means we're going to want to move some positive number of pixels in the x direction, right? To the bullet is forward of the player. And it's also down some amount, right? So let's just move it 20 pixels forward and 20 pixels down, or 20 pixels forward and 20 pixels to the right of the player. And, and we'll see if that's good enough. We'll adjust it uh, once we have it working, OK? But that also means that if I'm going to have a vector in my in my um, settings file, I'm going to have to define it here, like we've done in the other files. OK, so we have our. So we have our offset, and we're going to adjust that. But we need to use that over here when we spawn the bullet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do it in our code where we shoot, which was right here. Okay. So when we spawn the bullet, instead of sending the position of the player itself, we need to add, uh, we need to add that offset. So we're going to say the position where we that we want is the player's position. It's whatever the player's position is, plus the barrel offset rotated uh, to match the player's rotation. Right. That way, it will be pointing in the right, right direction. And then we send that. That's the position that we're going to send to the bullet. So let's see what that looks like. And if we guess some good values for where our bullet will spawn. Well, let's get out of the way of some of these. Looks like we're too far to the right, and we could maybe go a little more forward, right? Notice how it rotates as I move around, and it always spawns 20 pixels over and 20 pixels forward. So let's move it a little bit more. Uh, let's move it a little bit more forward and a little bit less to the right. Now let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks much better. Okay, so now it looks like the bullets are coming out of the gun when I shoot them and not spawning in midair or coming out of the player. All right, let's add one other thing to the bullets, and that is I would like them to have I would like it to have a little bit of kickback. And that means it's when you fire the gun, it's going to push the player back a little bit. Okay. And the kickback is going to be a speed that it's going to push us uh, backwards. So let's make that, oh, let's try 200 and see how that looks. So that means when we spawn the bullet here, um, we also want to add, or we also want to modify the player's velocity. So we spawn the bullet and we set the velocity equal to the kickback, right, in the negative direction, also rotated at whatever the player is. So now when I fire the gun, it should push me backwards. I'm going to get out of the way of these zombies so we have a chance to see it. Yeah, see how I get a little bit of... These zombies are annoying when you can't get rid of them. You get over here where they can't chase me. Let's see, I get a little bit of a push backwards when I fire my gun. Okay, so one other thing that would make the shooting look a little nicer is to give the gun a little bit of inaccuracy. Okay, and what that means is every bullet isn't going to come out in a perfectly straight line. There's going to be a spread. Some will go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and this number will represent how many degrees to the left or right of straight that the bullet will travel. So that means when we go over here to our sprites, when we spawn the bullet, we want to pick a random number between minus 5 and 5 and add that to our direction. Okay. And so we're going to take and we're going to pick a random value. And for this, I don't want a random value that's an integer. I don't want it to just be minus 5, 
minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, and so on. I want any number between minus 5 and plus 5, including any kind of real number. So that means I can go up here and at the top from random, I'm going to import uniform. And that's exactly what the uniform random command does, is it gives you a real number back that's between your two uh, bounds. Okay, So spread is going to be a uniform between minus the gun spread and the gun spread. Okay, so we get a, so we now have a random number somewhere between minus five and plus five. So we just take our direction vector and we rotate it uh, by that spread. So it'll rotate a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Okay, and what that's going to do is let us see some spread. See how the bullets are not all going in the same direction. Just to see it even more, we probably wouldn't want to do this, but if you had a really bad inaccurate gun, right, you can see that they're spraying out in all directions. Okay, so that's perfect. That's what we want to do. So we're going to leave that at five. So it's just a little bit of variety in there. Okay, and last but not least, we want these bullets to kill the zombies. Now, just to keep it simple right now, uh, we're going to add in our update section, we're just going to do a pg.sprite.groupcollide. Right? We want to collide two groups, the mobs group and the bullets group. And what do we want to do? Well, we want the we want the mobs that get hit we're going to put false and the bullets that get hit we're going to put true so the bullets disappear when they hit the, the zombie and the zombie does not disappear but what we're going to do is for each of those hits we are just going to say hit dot kill just for the moment um, because the mobs don't have a health and the bullets don't have a damage or anything like that yet we're just going to have one shot kills them, which is good enough to start with. Okay, And sure enough, now the bullets kill the zombies. OK, well, this video has gone really long. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to keep um, them to my 10 to 15 minute limit I originally set, because there's just so many things I want to do. I got excited about doing the, the shooting, and um, I have more stuff that I to get, didn't get a chance to yet that we'll do in the next video. So hopefully you're enjoying it. Um, post your questions below. Please hit like on the video and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.